Hey guys, ever wonder how the JavaScript add event listener works? Okay, let's build our own. Let's start off with the data structure. So we're gonna have an object that's gonna hold, it's gonna be a map and it's gonna hold the event name and the array of functions. Function one, two, three, and so on. And the same with bar, it only has one function. Then we're gonna have three methods on it. The first one is gonna be the on method. So we're gonna pass it an event name. First, we verify if the event name exists. If it doesn't, then we instantiate it with an empty array. So then we could push the listener to it. The off method does pretty much the same thing. So we pass it an event name and then we verify if it exists. If it does not, then we return this and we will talk about why we are returning this. And if it does exist, then we're gonna remove the first instance of the listener because we're using an array. We don't want to remove all of them. And then lastly, we're gonna have the emit function, which is going to be, again, the event name. And then we verify if it exists. If it does not, then we do an early return. And if it does exist, we're gonna use function prototype apply to call the function with the arguments that we passed previously. So what I've done here is I've just created a Next.js starter repo and nothing else to it. So I just use Tailwind and all the default values. Now let's start our local environment. I use port 3356 and inside our public folder, let's create a file called event emitter.js. And in here we can start going crazy with it. So let's first do a class. event emitter and this class will have constructors and then we don't want to have any naming problems for let's say if a person would pass an event called to string this would interfere with the with the default with the default method called to string for, from an object. So for this, we will use object.create null. This will create a, a truly empty object with no, with, no, uh, with no prototype. All right, now that we took care of this, let's start implementing our first method. So as discussed, we're gonna have the on method and the on method is gonna take the event name and the listener. Then we will check if the object has own this dot events and event name. And if it doesn't, then we're going to instantiate it with an empty array. And then we're going to push the event, the listener to the event name. So write how we discussed in here, exactly this sort of stuff and our final data structure is gonna be looking like this. Then we're gonna have the off method and it's gonna take an event name and it's gonna take the listener. If the object doesn't, has, doesn't have the event name, then we're gonna return this. We, we want to return this every time because we want to be able to chain all the methods. Then in here, we're going to say const listeners equal this dot event dot event name. Then we need to find the index. And then we need to check if the index is less than zero, then it means the listener has not been found. And then we can return this. And if we found the listener, then we want to get it and we want to splice it. So basically we just want to remove that listener from the array of listeners of that event name. And then we want to do the same with the net. We're gonna give it an event name and then we want 
to do the arguments. And then we're gonna do two checks here. We're gonna check if the object has own property and this is correct, but we want to check if this dot events event name dot length is zero. If any of these arguments are correct, then we can do an early return because there's nothing for us to emit. Then we need to do again listeners and we want to slice it. Slice returns a shallow copy of the listeners. So in here, we want to map over each listener. So listeners dot for each. And then we want to L dot apply the this context doesn't really matter for us because this for us can be null and then the arguments we just want to pass it all the arguments that we provided and then we want to return true and this is the entire implementation of the event emitter now let's actually in actually to be able to use it in in Next.js and to have all the complete for it and everything, then we actually have to type it. So let's create here a globals dot d dot ts. And then we're gonna do an interface i event emitter, which is gonna be on and is gonna take an event name, which is gonna be a string. And then it's gonna take a listener, which is gonna be a function. And it's gonna return i event emitter. Off is gonna be the same story, and then emit is gonna be args any, but it's actually going to be an array of any. And then we want this event emitter to be able to have it on the window object so we can use it anywhere. So for this, we're gonna do a declare var event emitter. And it's gonna be an i event emitter. And right here at the end of our function, we're gonna say window dot event emitter, and it's gonna be a new event emitter. And like this, we have it globally available after we actually put it inside our document. So in pages, if we go to document.tsx, and then if we pop open this head tag. And then we can do a script, src is event emitter.js, and we need to defer it. And now we can do the following. Let's clean up everything that we have here up until this part. And let's create a button. Uh, let's create a classic counter, actually. Yeah. And for this, let's do a components and say counter.tsx, tsrxe, and then const count set count. And now we can do something like this use effect. And then we can do event emitter dot on count count is a number and we want to say set count count and actually let's not pass it anything let's just say set count count plus one and for it to actually work let's do this perfect so now we have our counter and we have our event emitter and now if we actually put the counter here. Event emitter is not defined, which can be expected. Okay, so I forgot something. So the type of the script actually has to be a module in order for this to work. So now we have the event on count and we can set the count plus one. And then in here, let's create a button and 
increment count. And let's make it look a bit like a button. All right. And now on click of this button, we actually want to event emitter that emit count and now we basically have an event emitter we don't have to pass any props we don't have to pass any state and then we can increment the count from a totally different place we could actually increment the count from a totally different environment if this event emitter is globally scoped here we could actually increment the count from the console and it's still going to work all right this was everything for today hope you liked it hope you find found it helpful i had fun doing it and see you on the next one